Um, you know, all of this is all fine because let me just say, all of this is fine because it all requires follow-up. I mean, you can have the best instruments in the world, but if you don't have the time to devote to that particular student, then it's really, you know, uh, a hit or miss proposition at best. Um, so anxiety, this is the first of the variables. Um, you know, there are strategies to reduce anxiety, stress management, study skills, test taking, all of these. Uh, uh, once regulations of anxiety uh, helps to improve these other features. I'll go into a little bit more of that later. Uh, because anxiety is a very significant uh, variable in this study at the preliminary stages that I'm at. Next one is attitude, uh, you know, goal setting. Uh, attitude, by the way, uh, has to do, and again, there's a little bit more of a definition later, but it has to do with the student's understanding of how education is connected to career and profession. So earlier, like I, for example, I mentioned, mentioned time management, how important deadlines are, you know, that's, an, that's associated with an attitude. Uh, students have to understand why time is important, why it's critical. Um, and so if they have a very loose association about time, a very a casual you know, uh, uh, understanding of time, then they're going to have a difficult time because there are going to be professors there that are not going to accept late work, period. If it's late, they don't want it. So, you know, the attitude is critical. Um, and I try to tell them, you know, you know it, it becomes, see, for a student that's in the nursing or medical profession, they understand clearly that timing is critical. In business, they understand timing and time management is critical. Um, in other professions, it's not so clear, but, you know, I try to reinforce the fact that, you know, whether you're in the medical field, the sciences, or the math, you know, the social sciences and the humanities, time is critical as well. And I raise examples of that also. Journalism, for example, you know, time is critical. Your article is not going to get it. If it's not there on time, it's not going to make it to the publication. Yes, that's sure. Uh, how long does it take to go through these uh, inventory hours to is this going on a one session? No, one session, uh, usually a half an hour, 30 minutes online. Yeah, you could, it, it could be completed. Um, you know, which, which um, for most students, for most students, yeah. I would say, you know, the student, again, it raises a question because we have students at different reading levels. So, you know, I'm always kind of conscious of that. Um, and there is an instrument that's associated with the LASI uh, the instructional modules, which comes at the college level and the high school level. And I'm starting now to think that perhaps I would do better to look at the high school level because the instructional modules seem to be at too high a level for the students that we're getting. It's taking them too long to do the instructions which are associated with this. Um, so we started out with an inventory, and I wrote a grant, and I got a money for a grant to to, uh, to purchase, rather to lease, the instructional materials. And we just started doing that uh, this semester. Um, but I'm beginning to get feedback from the students and say, how long is it taking you to do this exercise? It's going to be two hours, three hours. I said, okay. Some of them can go through it rather quickly, but others, they, you know, because of the level, uh, the, the English level, they have a hard time with that. Um, anyway. Questions. Yeah. <clears throat> um, do all of your first year students who who takes LASI? All your students, a portion of your students, only those students registered for OCD? All. From, tell, tell me, give me a context if you will. Yeah, all, all the students take it. All the students in my class take it. Um, in and other, all the other classes or just you, yours? In mine, in mine only for the most part. Now, if a colleague of mine wants to uh, uh, offer that, the last to their class, 
definitely, I would say, yeah, you could you know, give it to your class as well. Uh, but I have all my students take it. Um, other, you know, again, the last day requires some integration sure. into the course, and and some, sure. you know, some instructors may not feel, uh, you know, for whatever reason, uh, committed to that. Yeah, I'm just trying to get a sense of whether it is integrated institutionally, or this is something that you are piloting. Yes, 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 yes. So it is something that I'm piloting. Um, it is something that has been given uh, before. I mean, it, it was something that was uh, administered before I got there. Somebody introduced me to it, and then I took it. Um, um, but it's not something that all the sections and just primarily myself don't do. Um, so we have the attitude scale. Uh, the concentration is another important scale uh, of the LASI. Um, and again, um, you know, this is the PowerPoint that I also share and I cover in class. The students understand um, the elements that are associated with each one of these scales. Um, and, uh, you know, it makes for a good conversation um, uh, because Many of these, many of them, this is, a lot of this is kind of like alien to them, like if they've never done this before. Um, and so I, you know, I try to, and for me, it's, it's, it's like, okay, um, these are things that need to be done uh, in order to succeed in college. And I, I try to impress upon them that also, you know, their grades and their grade point averages depend upon whether or not they utilize these strategies effectively. Um, so, motivation, another one. Again, um, you know, the conversation around one's strengths, the conversation uh, about, you know, priorities, um, and, and, and planning, and planning, and, and planning ahead. Um, so we talk about you know, procrastination and, and, and what happens to one if, if one uh, finds oneself procrastinating. You have all kinds of questions to get out of that uh, that particular uh, mode of, of, of being. Um, Self-testing. This is another one that uh, many of them do not practice, but you know. I, in, I try to encourage them to work in groups. So, and I, and I emphasize to them that the best students, the best students work together. I mean, you see medical students, engineering students, the very best of them get together in groups and they test one another. Uh, and so, um, that's another one of the variables. Selecting main idea, again, having to do with reading, and how do you select main ideas in your reading assignments, what do you do when you're reading, um, and so this is another one of those very important uh, uh, scales. The use of study aids is another one that, uh, and, and how to study effectively, this is another one of the scales, um, that they'll need to learn, and one of the ones that we cover in class. So, you know, some of these particular uh, factors we discuss in the course are integrated into the course already. Um, others are not so much so, like concentration, but you know, we, you know, we incorporate that. Time management, we spoke of earlier, and you know, I have them put together a schedule, and I, and I review the schedule to see. First and foremost, I have them put down their courses. And so when they come to me, we have a conversation. Before the midterm period, we have a conversation about the courses you're taking and how much time do you have to devote to this material. Because many of them are working. 
Do many of them work part time? Many of them work, some of them work full time. And so, how do you achieve this balance, a critical balance? You know, and I try to impress upon them that one course alone can take out eight to ten hours a week, just one course. And I know some of those courses, you know, because I see the, learn the outcomes at the end. So I, I know that they're enrolled in two very difficult, challenging courses in their first semester. They don't know it, but I know it. And so I try to impress upon them that you know, this is this is not going to be a cakewalk. Okay, this is a course that you're definitely going to have to. And by the time they get their midterms, they understand that what I've said to them, you know, uh, is foretelling. Um, test taking strategies is another one um, that we discuss. And so, what we have is now I want to present is the is is the, the population of statistics. Um, most of the students at BCC are first generation college and they don't have, right, they don't have anyone in their families um, to provide any kind of support. Uh, the employment, 34% um, are, are part-timers, um, which is uh, less than 34 hours a week. 12% uh, of full time is more than 35 hours a week. Household income, as we know in the Bronx, is amongst the lowest in the country. Um, and so, you know, they don't have the resources. And oftentimes, you hear them talking about, I don't have the money for the books, um, which is why I push to, I try, you know, when they present the problem, I try to present the solution. Um, and so, because I'm, I'm kind of a solution focused person. I don't like to quabble about, you know, problems. And, you know, if there is a challenge, this is what we need to do, this is what we need to go. The financial aid regulations these days have, uh, have linked their rate of progress and the grade point average uh, to uh, the grants, so it's important that they perform academically, um, otherwise they risk losing their financial aid pretty quick. It wasn't so much so before, but the standards, uh, the financial aid standards have been raised, the whole process has shifted, and so rate of progress and rate of, and rate of progress becomes important. The remediation needs, you know, reading, writing, and math skill proficiency um, at the college, um, you know, presently, uh, students who are skilled proficient Right, um, in these three areas represents by the 30th credit only 46% of the students are considered skills proficient in reading, writing, and math by the 30th credit. So we have students particularly struggling with math. Math is the one that gets most of them. Um, but then we have those who struggle also with the reading and writing because we have second language students. Um, and then, you know, the, the, the persistence, one-year retention is presently at 58%. Um, so, again, all of this kind of points to the kinds of challenges that our students face. What was the procedure going to the question again? Um, you know, students who participated in the freshman or orientation were instructed to complete the last year and bring a copy of the results for the following session. So we discussed, you know, take the last year, it's on the surface. You know, does, does everybody take the last week the first week? No, no. You know, does it, do they take it the second week? You know, it, you know, it depends. I mean, sometimes students take up to a month to just get the last week completed. It's something that would take a half hour. Um, so, you know, which is kind of frustrating because when you're ready to discuss something and they're not prepared, um, it's just very frustrating. Question? Yes. The uh, workshops that you refer to here, yes, are they out of class assignments, or are they part of the hour-long uh, orientation? They're, they're out of class. They're out, out of class. class. Assignments. Yeah, okay. out of class assignments. Yeah, there's a workshop booklet that's prepared at the beginning of the semester, so it covers the entire semester, and you have uh, a variety of different the faculty administrators who 
can offer these workshops. You know, like nursing might offer, financial aid might offer, and then we also have uh, a team of counselors who cover uh, these factors uh, related to stress management, motivation, and so on and so forth. A variety of different workshops. Yes. So this inventory is done at the beginning of the semester. Um, yes. You, you do it only once. You do it at the end of the intervention per se to see whether there is some some difference on how they now perceive their strengths. You don't do that uh, at the end. At the end. Yes. We started to do that. Um, we started to do that this semester. We have pre and we have post. That's one of the things we're looking at now. Uh, are the results of the pre post. Um, and once again, you know, it has to be done before the semester ends, because if you know, because if you if you you know you gotta time it right so that they have enough time to do it. Ideally, you'd have to really get them in a lab. Uh, you know, that really has to happen. I'm convinced now that in order to get students to do it, uh, you have to get them into a computer lab and have them do it there. Um, because you ask them to do it, and again, you know, you might get a third of them to do it. Um, and so that's another way of, of solving that problem. But yes, that's something that we're, we're looking at. Um, These are the semesters that we that I covered actually. Um, basically, there were 11 semesters. Uh, in the beginning, it kind of went slow, and then it started to, to pick up as I uh, uh, started to. Also, I, I, I teach four sections of OCD, um, and, and, and now that we have the FYS, I do a combination of of the first year seminar and OCD. But during those days, basically, I taught uh, four classes. And I also had some colleagues of mine uh, also uh, participate in the classes. A couple of them, very, a few, <coughs> two or three of them also participated. So we got these, these numbers uh, for that particular period. This is the, the frequency distribution of that population. Um, as you can see, um, actually this should be 0 0.01, uh, as well. but um, the rest of them are, are correct. As you can see, most of the students are Hispanic, uh, over 60%, uh, and the figure has, from what I understand, at present uh, gone up. Uh, and uh, we have uh, about close to 30% Black. That right there represents about 90% of the population. This is a sample of the last see what the student would receive once they complete the instrument. So they can see that, you know, in this case, this student was a very good student, a nursing uh, major. Um, her anxiety, by the way, you know, this is the only one where it's flipped, the anxiety, so the, the lower it is. It doesn't mean that their anxiety is low, it really means that they need to work on that area. Um, anything between zero and 50, a score uh, below the 50th percentile uh, designates that students need to improve that skill in order to avoid any serious problems in the future. Um, and most of our students you know, are below, we'll show you that in a while. Um, but this is uh, a pretty strong student uh, by comparison to most of the students that we have. Again, um, she is uh, a committed mother and nursing major. Um, this is, by the way, on the flip side of that bar graph, this is the kinds of comments that the students would receive, you know, one for each uh, item. So, you know, for example, the anxiety, it says that you know students who score low on this scale they need to develop techniques for coping with anxiety and reducing worry so that attention can be focused on the task at hand. Um, and so these are the comments, these are the kinds of comments that students receive. Again, I only copied two, but there are ten that students receive.
Okay, so this is the frequency distribution of that group, um, 930 um, 